Continue to follow this breaking news here on the now. We're monitoring a very large grass fire burning to the north of Kansas City. 1,300 acres in Platte County has burned so far, we're told. Yeah, this land owned by the Bureau of Prisons, and they were out mowing this morning, and apparently a bearing went out of the mower, flew off, and sparked the fire. We're expecting a news conference to begin now any minute with the deputy fire chief out of Platte County. In the meantime, we have J.D. Rudd out there uh, monitoring this because the winds have been such a huge issue, J.D. Yeah, they've been a big issue for us today. There's no question about that at all. We've seen wind gusts today close to 50 miles an hour. We've been out here for the last oh, uh, about an hour or so now, and here in the last two or three minutes, we've got our highest uh, wind gusts so far in our current location, which is just outside of Weston and about four miles away uh, from the Tracy area. We've seen around a uh, 35 mile an hour wind gusts kick its way up here in our area. And what this means is a whole uh, issue why we have the red flag warning in place, which, by the way, uh, the National Weather Service has now issued a red flag warning for tomorrow. So here Here's your early heads up. It's going to be the same kind of deal for us as we go into tomorrow. But you have dry conditions. You have these very high wind, which I'm talking to you and measuring the wind at the same time. And so when you've got the dry conditions, you've got the wind going on. Uh, keep in mind, too, you've got things like vegetation down here with 8% uh, or less, as they call it, of moisture content. It's very, very dry. All it takes is a wayward spark, be it from a lawnmower, from a barbecue grill, from a cigarette. Whatever you do the next couple of days, don't do that with your cigarettes. Taiwanese authorities are confronting a new problem caused by the earthquake in the southern city of Tainan. They're dealing with sinking buildings caused by soil liquefaction. The earthquake on February 6th killed 116 people, including more than 30 children. Local media report that in one coastal area, structures sank about one meter. Many houses have had their first floor buried. I've never seen this before. It's scary. Experts say the damage is so bad that the buildings are beyond repair. Premier Chang San Chen has ordered officials to survey the damage. He plans to have them publish a list of other areas that could face the same problem. We're watching a developing story right now, learning of a deadly attack in the capital of Turkey. Officials say a car bomb exploded near a military housing complex in Ankara, killing at least five and injuring 10. CBS News foreign correspondent Holly Williams joins us on the phone from near the border of Turkey and Syria. Holly, what are you learning about this attack? Well, Contessa, the explosion uh, apparently hit a convoy of military vehicles. Uh, near military headquarters in Ankara, which is the Turkish capital. So it may be that this was a targeted attack uh, on Turkish military personnel. Now, video uh, posted on the Internet shows a big plume of smoke hanging over the city. Uh, and Ankara's governor said that this was a suspected car bomb uh, and he said that the death toll at this point is five uh, with ten wounded. If this was indeed uh, a terrorist attack, uh, no group has so far taken responsibility. But it follows a spate of terrorist attacks uh, in Turkey in the last few months. Uh, in the town of Saruç in July, more than 30 people were killed by a suicide bomber. Uh, also in Ankara in October, more than 100 people were killed at a peace rally uh, by two suicide bombers. And in Istanbul last month, uh, 12 people died, most of them foreign tourists, uh, also the work of a suicide bomber. Uh, the Turkish state uh, in each of those cases uh, either, either stated or suggested uh, that the attack was the work of ISIS, but ISIS did not claim responsibility for any of those incidents. It's also worth po uh, pointing out that the Turkish state is engaged in a deadly conflict in the country's southeast with Kurdish militants. And in the last few days, uh, Turkey has also shelled Kurdish groups over the border in Syria. But as I said, uh, if indeed this is a terrorist attack, uh, as it very much looks, uh, no group uh, has taken responsibility. All Contessa? right. Holly, thank you very much. Appreciate the information that you're gleaning now. And certainly there will be more to come as more uh, details become available. We're following breaking news in the fight against ISIS. American warplanes targeted a high-value target in a major strike this morning in Libya. A local leader says the airstrike killed at least 40 people. Jonathan Vigilotti is tracking this unfolding story from London. Jonathan, good morning. 
Good morning. According to U.S. officials, the airstrikes targeted a senior Tunisian operative linked to ISIS attacks in Tunisia last year. A U.S. defense official tells CBS News that target Nouradine Shushani was likely killed. Shushani is wanted in connection to a march attack at the National Bardot Museum, where 22 people were killed. And another attack in June when gunmen stormed a Tunisian beach popular with Western tourists, killing 38. The airstrikes come as the White House and Western allies struggle to contain ISIS. Just this week, President Obama said the U.S. would go after ISIS in Libya wherever they appear. Much like Syria and Iraq, the terrorist group has made their presence known in the country, carrying out several gruesome beheadings, including this one last February, allegedly showing militants killing Coptic Christians on a beach near Tripoli. Libya has been a growing concern since political unrest began five years ago. U.S. defense officials say around 5,000 ISIS fighters are now in the country, and the U.S. considers the target of today's attack a key figure in ISIS operations there. Nora. All right. Thank you, Jonathan. Pope Francis taking on Donald Trump, saying, quote, a person who builds walls is not a Christian. The Holy Father talked to reporters on the plane while leaving Mexico. And here's what he said about the Republican presidential frontrunner. Thank God. He said I was a politician because Aristotle defined the human person as animal politicus. So at least I am a human person. As to whether I am a pawn, well, maybe. I don't know. I'll leave that up to your judgment and that of the people. And then, a person who thinks only about building walls, whether they may be, and not building bridges, is not Christian. This is not in the gospel. As far as what you said about whether I would advise to vote or not to vote, I am not going to get involved in that. I say only that this man is not Christian if he has said things like that. We must see if he said things in that way, and in this, I give the benefit of the doubt. When Donald Trump deals with protesters... Get him out. He doesn't mean out of the country, but for those who want to voluntarily leave... Hi, Americans. Donald Trump may become the president of your country. If that happens and you decide to get the hell out of there, might I suggest moving to Cape Breton Island? First of all, where is Cape Breton? It's in Nova Scotia, along Canada's eastern coast. Boy, is it beautiful. And nobody has a handgun. Cape Breton radio DJ Rob Calabrese is no Donald Trump fan. His If Trump Wins website started as a joke. Come on up to Cape Breton. Where women can get abortions, Muslim people can roam freely, and the only walls are holding up the roofs of our extremely affordable houses. There are answers to questions like, how do I immigrate to Canada? Though often... They want to know if they can bring their cats to Canada. The website has been flooded with hundreds and hundreds of inquiries. Would you consider moving to Canada if Donald <sighs> Trump were elected president? I'm thinking Berlin. I would do it in a heartbeat. I would. No. <laughs> I'm an American. I'm going to stay here no matter who's president. I'm moving to Europe if he's elected president. <laughs> but in Cape Breton, they need people. Absolutely. We have an unsustainable population decline. Housing is a bargain. We saw three-bedroom waterside houses selling for $200,000, even $25,000. Sure, Rob has gotten some angry emails from Trump supporters. Why would anyone want to move to Canada, especially some isolated, known-for-nothing place like Cape Breton? Well, it's known for something now. Cape Breton's motto, your heart will never leave. Get him the hell out of here, will you please? Genie Mo, CNN. Bye bye. New York. At 5.30, mystery in the sky. A Macomb County neighborhood discovers a tar-like substance on homes, cars, and driveways. They have no idea where this stuff is coming from, and they want answers. 7 Action News reporter Anu Pekas joins us live with the latest. Anu. Well, some people who live in this area were thinking that maybe that mystery substance was coming from a military kind of aircraft since Selfridge Air National Guard Base is so close by, but Selfridge says it doesn't look like it. What is this stuff that has landed on driveways, cars, and porches in Harrison Township? Paul Schluto came home to find this black stuff splattered all over his property. He says he can't seem to get an answer from anyone. 
you feel almost like a lost cause. But this afternoon, fire officials came out to collect samples of the mystery substance. It's been found on another five to seven houses on Ballard and Edmond Streets. The fire chief says it's not bird droppings, but it's hard to tell what it is. There was a concern that it was a flammable liquid, and it wasn't. It's more of an ash-type consistency uh, that has a little bit of, it seems to have an oily-type consistency as well. Some residents think it could have come from a plane since Selfridge Air National Guard Base is so close by. But Selfridge now says there's no indication this substance came from any type of military aircraft. There's health con concerns. Uh, I don't know what it is. Don't know if it's hazardous. I don't know what it's going to do to my truck. I don't know what it's going to, if they can get this off of my drive. But for now, it is a little bit of a mystery. That resident, Paul Schluto, tells me that this afternoon, someone from the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality came by his house and took some samples of that mysterious substance. He was told that he could get an answer sometime next week. We'll keep you posted. Live in Harrison Township, a new Prakash 7 Action News.